cardiac resynchronization therapy is an established therapy for patients with advanced heart failure. What about patients with mild heart failure? To that, we have to go into reverse. For a study that was first published years ago, but coming up in the September 2015 issue of Jack Heart Failure, we have five-year results. Long-term extrapolation of clinical benefits among patients with mild heart failure receiving cardiac resynchronization therapy. And I am with Dr. Michael Gold, who is an MD, PhD, and Chief of Cardiology at the Medical University of South Carolina. Let's take us back first into reverse and remind us of where this was originally, what were your outcomes when you first reported the REVERSE trial? So REVERSE was one of the first studies of CRT in mild heart failure. So it was a prospective, randomized, double-blind study uh, of patients with mild heart failure, uh, reduced ejection fraction on a YQRS. And what we did in REVERSE is that every patient was implanted with a device, and then the device was either turned on or turned off uh, for up to two years. And what we showed is that patients had uh, improvements in their quality of life. They had improvements uh, in terms of their clinical composite score, and they had reductions in heart failure hospitalizations uh, with CRT turned on. So it was exciting news. Reverse remodeling was shown, which around the same time made it CRT. And then the RAF study uh, not only showed similar results, but extended it with even longer term follow-up. Now, you've got five years, so what are you showing in this paper in Jack Heart Failure? Yeah, so what was intriguing and one of the limitations of many randomized trials, particularly device trials, is that the period of randomization is short. So in reverse, it was only up to two years, so many of the long-term questions you can't be asked. So we had a pre-specified five-year follow-up period, although everyone who was programmed to CRT off after one to two years had their CRT turned on. So we used some unique statistical methods, uh, which are very common in the uh, oncology literature because with cancer treatments, you can't leave patients off therapy for long periods of time uh, to be able to extrapolate the results during randomization to long-term results. And by doing this, um, for the first time, we think we were able to show in the uh, patients with mild heart failure the magnitude of benefit uh, of CRT. So what we could show is that patients who receive CRT live on average almost two and a half years longer wow. by having CRT on versus off. And we could also compare, because it was the only study that included both CRT defibrillators and CRT pacemakers, that receiving a CRT defibrillator uh, prolonged life almost three years compared to a CRT pacemaker. Wow, that's kind of impressive. You've got to be happy with those kind of results. Yeah, we're, we're very excited with it. And I, 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 besides you know, nice results. I think it also points out that uh, we need to be looking in a more realistic, real-world perspective when we do studies such as device studies where uh, there's a lot of upfront costs and risks in implanting devices, and then we don't recoup all of that in terms of the duration of our randomization because devices are still very active and patients are continuing with their device for many years afterwards. So this is one new novel way of being able to at least estimate that benefit. Now, because of cost, everybody looks at everything these days very closely. What patients would you recommend this approach for? Uh, well, certainly I, I think the data are now quite clear from the composite of these studies that patients with mild heart failure, um, certainly class two patients, um, uh, should receive CRT if they have a reduced ejection fraction, a YQRS, and certainly a left bundle branch block. Uh, the data for mild heart failure and right bundle branch block are less clear, although we're gonna be talking um, interesting at ESC uh, later today about how newer techniques for lead placement, lead positioning, and programming may even benefit right bundle branch block patients, but I think that may be a little premature in the mild heart failure patients. Now, in terms of one of the other things you analyzed was New York Heart Association class one and two patients were shown to have significantly reduced risk of heart failure hospitalization compared to class three, leading to CRT reducing heart failure rehospitalization rates. Given that rehospitalization is such a problem, this has to be pretty uh, good news also. Right, exactly. So CRT delays the progression of disease. So not only does it save lives, but fewer patients uh, move on to class three and four, fewer patients have hospitalizations. 
and that has very important implications for cost effectiveness uh, of the therapy as well, because not only uh, do you save lives, but you're reducing the burden of disease and the burden on the healthcare system uh, by implanting these devices earlier. Uh, but again, I think for a cost-effective analysis, we've all appreciated that you can't look at two-year data or five-year data. You need to look long-term and sometimes lifetime data where uh, these types of methods uh, become very useful so that we could uh, estimate the magnitude of doing that. And our, our initial view of this is that uh, implanting these patients early, class two patients, rather than waiting for progressive heart failure, not only is cost effective, but it may even be cost savings or at least cost neutral. And in terms of what's next, are you going to continue following these patients? Or are you going to? No, the, the, the follow up ended at five years, so we have those data, but a more formal cost effective analysis is, is needed so we can quantify uh, both the financial impacts as well as what we've now shown is the clinical impacts of early adoption of therapy into the milder heart failure and the use of CRTD versus CRTP. So in the next year or two, we should have some numbers? I hope sooner than that. <laughs> Great, that's good news. And we'll try and find you then too, if you don't mind. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.